AI is not magic. What makes AI work so well is a closely guarded secret that AI development companies would love to hide from you, but we will be revealing it to you in this video. Have you ever wondered how AI is able to mimic human-level intelligence as if there is a human on the other end that is responding to you? Well, it is because that is what is really happening, technically anyway. Without humans doing the heavy lifting on the other end, all AI systems would be useless, if not dangerous. The question is, who are these people at the other end? And how are they being used by the big tech companies? This is a video about the digital sweatshops serving generative AI behind the walls. Every time AI propriety companies such as OpenAI talk about how their generative AI modules work, they always talk about data sets and nothing else. What they always fail to mention is the fact that these data sets are useless if humans don't train the AI on how to use the copious amounts of data it is fed. For example, ChatGPT4 was trained on a data set of 570 gigabytes of text and code, including text scraped from Wikipedia, Twitter, and Reddit. This data set is significantly larger than those used to train previous language models, such as GPT-2 and 3. Using humans behind the scenes to power AI is as old as AI itself. Nothing explains it better than Amazon's crowdsourcing service, Amazon Mechanical Turk. Strange name, right? But that name explains the concept of human labor being used to run AI. This crowdsourcing company was named after the Turk, which was a mechanical chess player who was able to beat all human players that played against it. Initially, it seemed like this automated chess player was indeed intelligent, but it was later discovered that the secret behind the Turk was a chess master hidden under the box the mechanized player was sitting on and controlling it to play the game mechanically. Inspired by this, Amazon launched the Mechanical Turk platform to outsource AI training jobs to humans working remotely. And within two years of its launch in 2005, those working behind the scenes had risen to 500,000 trainers in over 100 countries. The content AI uses is generated by humans and is meant for humans. Therefore, it is only natural that humans are used to ensure that the AI models work as intended and don't spool dangerous or misleading information. But the reason why AI companies don't talk about the human trainers working behind the scenes is simply that there are lots of dark secrets about how they go about sourcing and using these data labelers. In 2022, OpenAI burst onto the scene with the most commercially successful AI product in history, ChatGPT. All of a sudden, every big tech company wanted a piece of the pie. This astronomical increase in AI development meant increased demand for GPU chips, which was the focus of news headlines but it also meant an increase in demand for cheap AI trainers. It is estimated that the AI training dataset market will reach $11.7 billion in value by 2032. This should be good news for those working in this field. But unfortunately, the trainers who would be guiding these AI modules and the usage of these datasets would only be getting a pinch from this multi-billion dollar market. In the United States, these data labelers are earning $15 per hour which is just in the ballpark of what the national minimum wage is. There are no benefits, but the pay is not too bad either. But these are the lucky ones, away from the United States, and things take a dark turn. This is an industry that is growing like wildfire, and it seems the AI companies have a preference for data labelers outside of the United States. In 2019, Daniel Mo Chuang, a Kenyan data labeler, was laid off by Sama Limited for organizing a strike protesting poor working conditions and low wages. Unfortunately, this injustice did not get any media attention until 2022, when Sama was sued along with Meta for subjecting their workers to poor working conditions in Kenya. Sama is Meta's major outsourcing firm, handling the bulk of Facebook's regulation and data labeling. Motuang's lawyer said, Facebook subcontracts most of this work to companies like Sama, a practice that keeps Facebook's profit margins high, but at the cost of thousands of moderators' health and the safety of Facebook worldwide. Sama moderators report ongoing violations, including conditions which are unsafe, degrading, and pose a risk of post-traumatic stress disorder. At Sama's headquarters in Nairobi, Kenya, a sign proudly says, Sama source, the soul of AI. But hidden under this AI's magic are the crushed souls of those making it safe for others. Workers who check troubling content share stories of feeling terrible, not getting much money, and losing their jobs suddenly. One worker, Malfat Ekinyi, sees awful pictures daily, causing lasting pain. Astonishingly, the outsourcing company appears indifferent to the mental well-being of its workforce. No benefits, no therapy, just a meager compensation of approximately $10 per day. 
such a stark contrast between the venerated AI and the harsh realities of its guardians. It has been revealed that Sama also has a contract with OpenAI, the parent company of ChatGPT. This contract was worth about $200,000 and the job was for the labelers to identify harmful content in the dataset. The problem is not just the poor pay these workers get, it is the volume of work they are expected to do to get paid $1.32 to $2 per hour. Typically, these workers are expected to shift through about 20,000 words per hour. Basically, these operations are sweatshops, and the living conditions are terrible. It only gets worse. These outsourcing companies are spreading their tentacles in developing nations such as India, the Philippines, Venezuela, and basically anywhere they feel they can get away with paying their workers very low and getting away with human rights abuses. In a recent article by Rebecca Tan and Regine Cobato in the Washington Post, it was revealed that tens or even hundreds of thousands of underpaid workers from other countries were being exploited to do this gruesome job. The article sheds light on how in a city near the coast in the southern Philippines, many young workers spend their days in internet cafes, crowded offices, or their homes, sorting huge amounts of data that U.S. companies use to teach their AI systems. This kind of work, called crowd work, involves over 2 million people in the Philippines. These companies are being careful and intentionally subcontracting these jobs to subcontractors to avoid lawsuits like the one Facebook suffered in 2020 when a U.S. court ordered the tech company to pay its moderators $52 million in settlement for PTSD they developed on the job. Unfortunately, there is never news of any sort of settlement in the developing nations where these big tech companies are taking their jobs. These tech companies are taking shortcuts that could lead to something more dangerous than experts have initially anticipated. Privacy is going to be one of these problems. Having workers that are unregulated to do sensitive work like handling sensitive photos of people is something that is surely going to boomerang. This has already happened and is likely going to happen again. A case is that of AI-driven vacuum cleaner called the Roomba J7 series. The job of labeling pictures this vacuum cleaner took around people's homes was outsourced to data labelers in Venezuela, and in 2020, some of these pictures were leaked on Facebook with many of them being private pictures of people in vulnerable situations. One picture was that of a woman on a toilet seat with her pants down. Imagine having one of these vacuum cleaners in your home, and it is taking pictures around your home and is sending them directly to thousands of people in these data sweatshops. Even more disturbing is the fact that the military is also using the services of these data sweatshops. This is a security disaster waiting to happen, as a lot of these images the military needs to get labeled can easily get in the wrong hands as the data sweatshops are not regulated. In 2020, a U.S.-based AI labeling company called Scale AI secured a substantial $78 million contract from the U.S. Army for AI-related projects. However, an alarming practice came to light. They often don't directly handle the essential job of data annotation themselves. When contracted to generate AI training data, they pass on this responsibility to another company they own, named Remotasks, that sends out these jobs to Kenya, Uganda, Burundi, and the Philippines. This process raises concerns as it involves the creation of AI data by underpaid, overburdened, and inadequately trained workers in what can be likened to data sweatshops. The result in AI data of subpar quality holds the potential to negatively impact public trust in AI technology. Moreover, it inadvertently aids our economic rivals and adversaries rather than fostering domestic advancement. Such practices highlight the critical need for transparency and ethical standards in the rapidly evolving field of AI. Whichever way this is viewed, one thing is for sure. These data sweatshops are doing more harm than good unless they become regulated and the workers are given better working conditions and pay.